We're out at fire station number six, getting some great information on how to stay safe at the holidays, especially Thanksgiving. Shannon Terry's with us today. How are you, Chief? Good, good morning. We appreciate you coming out with us sure. today to talk about turkey frying safety. It's good weather for it. It is, it makes <laughs> me feel like it's Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. I'm ready for it. So, so give folks some, some basic tips. Before we get started, you're gonna show us how to go about safely frying a turkey, but yes. some good tips to think of before you get started. Well, we need to make sure that there's plenty of time to do all this. Don't rush. Uh -huh. And little to no alcohol is actually recommended. I know there's something about the holidays and all your family being in one small area at your house and you have to get food ready within a short amount of time. Evidently that makes people consume a little bit more alcohol, but to be absolutely safe about it, no alcohol, have plenty of time mm -hmm. and get your work area set up first. Um, when you have, mention the work area, you don't want to do this like on a porch or inside. You want to make sure you're out in some place where it's, if you get some kind of spillover, it's not going to catch fire. Right? right. YouTube's full of great examples of how not to use a turkey fryer. Mm -hmm. But we're going to show you how to use it safely. So we'll have a YouTube example of how to do it properly. <laughs> That's then. right. All right. So you're not on your porch. You're mm -hmm. not in the house. Uh, you're on a flat concrete or brick area. Like a driveway would be a good place. Yes. Okay. Why do you think we don't want you on your porch? What's wrong with the porch? A wooden porch, you know, that catches fire like that, right? Yep. Spill all that grease on it, and it just goes, oof. That would be <laughs> it's bad. Very, it's very bad. But we're gonna, we're gonna try and not spill the grease in the first no. place. But just in case you do, safer to be on concrete. Yes, flat concrete, outside. Mm -hmm. Good ventilation, because LP gas is, is heavier than air. So it's going to seek the lowest area and it's very flammable obviously and if you're inside in a, a garage or in an enclosed area uh, you'll have carbon monoxide poisoning from from being exposed to the gas too long. That would be just as bad as have fire catch on you. Yes, okay. it would be bad. If death either way it goes it's, it's not good. So you've got your, your space set up here you've got a chair all the way over there what the heck's that for? That's to demonstrate how far 10 feet is away from this cooking area. Um, we have two very dangerous components gas and fire. Mm -hmm. We can use it safely as a, as a great tool, but when you put them together, some things tend to go wrong. So if we have plenty of, of space, uh, 10 foot is the recommended distance, for, and then you keep your, your tank far away from your burner as far as you, as, don't put them right next to each other. Yeah, you don't want that, uh, that tube kind of looping down. You don't want the tank really close to the heat. No, stuff, and, right? and since you're outside, you'll notice that the breeze is uh, blowing in a way that if you notice the breeze is blowing away, you want to make sure that the uh, tank is separated from the, the burner because if the tank were to, or the burner were to fall down, you don't want it to fall in the direction of the, of the tank. So notice which way the wind's blowing. You want to carry away the fumes away from Correct. the fire That's right. as well. Exactly so if there's right. a leak or something, it doesn't blow right into the fire and boom. Very good. You've done this before. I've learned a couple things in my many years of coming out here talking to you guys. Now let's see if we can put it in a practical application though. So you've selected your site, you got your burner, everything is safe with that, you got it hooked up properly, you've got 10 feet around you that, that's all good. Mm -hmm. Let's start talking about the bird and the actual burner. How do you get ready for that? Well the bird has to be thawed mm -hmm. because when you're putting water in very hot grease, bad things happen. So you'll notice that the, the water hose is absolutely nowhere near us at this time because if, if there is an accident with the fire, people will, if they're not practicing on a very safe level, then they're going to grab the water hose by mistake. But water, I notice you've got something right. close by. You don't want water on a grease fire. ABC extinguisher. You want an extinguisher to put out the fire. Uh, absolutely also have your telephone nearby so you can dial 911. Very good, very good. Keep it right on here, but so you've got that, no water. You and you've this. bought the bird plenty of time and you've ahead of time. Um, it takes 24 hours for five pounds to thaw. So my little bird here is maybe 15 pounds. So you want it to have thawed for 72 hours before you, you got ready to cook it. All right, so as you got this, what, what are the roaster pans for? Well, when I get ready to take the, uh, the don't make me skip a step now. Okay. Well, I just saw that. I've never seen you guys use the pans before, so this well, is good stuff. Well, I want to be able to have a safe place for my bird to go when I get finished with measuring the water. I, before you got here, I filled this with water mm -hmm. because you want to find out how much water, excuse me, how much grease you're going to need. What's your level of grease going to be? Right. So first, you, you submerge the bird in uh, water. Right. Now, I noticed you don't have the water all the way up 
over the bird. It's okay if it's it's down about right. that far. Yes. Because that what that oil is going to be boiling. That's up. right. So now I'm going to take now. Uh, whoop! Almost forgot to mark my little place. This is how I'm going to know where my oil level is. That's with the bird in. But you're going right. to you're going to mark it once the bird comes out too, right? Right. So that way you know how much to fill in. See, I've been paying attention you over have. the years. Very good. See, there's a big difference there. Now, between where the oil level would be and where, where it is with the bird out. And this particular pot has a little indication that says maximum fill line, and coincidentally... <laughs> you're right there. I am within recommendedly. <laughs> I guess with a bird that big or bigger, you'd need a bigger pot yes. to fry it in that. If all else fails, read the directions that came with your turkey fryer. It'll tell you exactly what the maximum size bird you can use and what the maximum uh, oil level you've got. But now I'm going to empty the pot of water, completely dry it, mm -hmm. completely dry my thawed bird, and then put the oil at the level that I marked. Well, you know, the only problem with what you're telling me is I'm, I'm a man, and so when you say you read the directions, that's ah, almost kind of against my, <laughs> my own personal version of religion here. No, but that, that is a good idea to do that, and, and I guess these are good directions that we're giving out. So Because if you put a frozen bird or, or a partially frozen bird into this boiling hot oil, it's the same as putting water in it. It's gonna, it's gonna spark. It's gonna, yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna bubble over, and it'll be really pretty to watch, but not very safe. Yeah, especially when you start to see that bubbling over, and the oil gets into the flames. That's, that's no fun. That's right. So we're gonna, we, we pretend that this is cleaned out. We've, okay. we've got uh, the right level of oil. Um, we have. You got some firefighters out we here. We've got to help some out, handy right? dandy firefighters that are gonna show us how to properly light the burner. Okay. So why don't you walk us through the steps as they're actually doing it for properly lighting the burner. So we've got 10 feet clearance and he's going to turn the burner on, then turn the regulator on. you got to introduce your guys too. Sure. This is Mr. Humbles and Mr. Daniels. They're working with us today at Station 6. All right, so you got the gas flowing. Notice that's not a little match he's using. That's a very safe length of lighter. All right. Well, you can't even see the uh, the flame, but I can see just barely because it's so bright out here. There's Burns a blue clean, flame going it? there. That's yeah, nice. A little bit warm too, I imagine. Yes, it feels good today. All right, so you got the, the flame going there. So we're going to put the bird into the pot very slowly. Remember, we were not in a hurry to begin with, <laughs> in theory, right? Right. <laughs> You'll hold the bottom of it. There you go. Now, normally, you wouldn't have this tied up with all the plastic, so the no. bird would actually sit. I'm trying to improvise. In the middle of here. That's right. The, the bird would actually sit around there. So you're going to lower it nice and slowly. Now, is the oil going to be hot when you put it in, or do you no. put it in with the oil cold? No, the the oil's not hot, obviously, in this particular simulation. But right. you can, when you get it on the burner, and you've got it up to the recommended 225. Read the directions, you figure out what the recommended temperature yes. is. I've never fried a bird before, so it's- Well, you don't, you don't want it to go any further than 400 degrees. If it gets any higher than 400 degrees, it's gonna smoke, it might spill over and cause some problems. So it's very important that you slowly, slowly put the bird into the uh, hot grease mm -hmm. and you use a very long uh, flame resistant uh, oven mitt to help you so that when you slowly put it in the hot grease. Because you know you're going to get some steam coming up or some heat. Some a little. Up. So you, you want to make sure you've got your hand covered as you put it That's down. right. Same way you wouldn't put your hand right on top of the grill and kind of keep it lower and lower. You got it. Okay, well that seems, seems pretty good. And reasonable. I suggest you take the, uh, you take it off the burner, but some people will leave it on the burner and try and put their bird in. Uh, I just don't want to be concerned with the thing toppling over. So if it's on the ground, we can I, use. I guess that'd also be good just in case it does decide it's gonna boil up and over. Then you don't have to worry about all that oil going right down into the flame. Right. We've got it just going out here where it's not gonna catch fire. Right, and, and we're on concrete, work. remember? We're not right. on the uh, we're not on the, the wooden deck. <laughs> all right, and so you're gonna go ahead and put that back up there for us? It'll boil us some, some frozen turkey now. <laughs> 
Again, normally you would have it all thawed out before you put it in there. So that's pretty good. All right, so we're gonna let that cook for a while. And we should be safe and have a, a very happy Thanksgiving. All we gotta do then is... Well, I want you to, you to remember if all else fails, you want to read the read directions. The directions? Mm -hmm. You're killing me. <laughs> That's why we got you to tell me the directions, so I don't have to read them. Well, you have no more than 325 degrees so right. that uh, it won't boil over and be an issue for you. Uh, let's just play what if. What if it does boil over and the grease catches the... Uh, comes in contact with the flame. I run around like squirt going, ah, the turkey's on fire, the turkey's on fire. Well, we have a handy dandy extinguisher. ABC extinguisher, that's There you good. go. If you can safely turn off the gas, that'd be the, the, the safest and quickest way to do it. Well, that'd but be step it, number one would turn that off. Yes, if you can do that first and, and take care of your issue, otherwise, if, if there's any doubt whatsoever, uh, please call 911 and we will come quickly to your rescue. Hopefully no one will have to do that. Is there a phone number people can call for more fire safety information? Yes. You know, turkey frying and anything else? 329-4390 is Greenville Fire and Rescue. Italian Chief Terry, thank you very sure, much. Sure, thanks. Appreciate it. Have a safe Thanksgiving. Thank you.